Reference management is an important part of Action Science Explorer. In the overall ACE interface, the reference manager is the top left portion. Here we see the result of a user's query for dependency parsing papers. In the table, we see the author, title, year, and book title of those publications. Additionally, for each of those papers, we have URL, DOI, and PDF links that go directly to the publisher's website. For each paper, we can click on it and in the entry preview, show a reference version and an abstract for it. On the left, we have all of the manually created groups that the user has defined. Clicking on each of them floats the uh, grouped papers up to the top. Any of those selected papers can have a user customized review added to it, which is also visible in the entry preview window. Now additionally, you can select any group of papers and export them to any of the common editor types. For example, when we export to the clipboard here, we are given options for RTF, Microsoft Office 2007, BibTeX, HTML, EndNote, and so on. The next key component of Action Science Explorer is network analysis. Here we have a citation network of all of the papers that were shown in the Reference Manager. The selected papers in the Reference Manager are highlighted in the citation network visualization as well in blue. And then on the left side we have overall statistics for the citation network, such as the number of nodes in it, the average degree of the nodes, number of edges, and so on. Now we can also rank nodes by their individually computed statistics, such as the end degree or the number of citations that each received. They show up colored in the rank list and the nodes are colored in the, the node link visualization as well. And when you select sets of nodes, such as these highly cited ones, we see them both in the citation network and back in the reference manager where they're selected as well. Now using our double-ended filter at the bottom, we can remove those papers that are not very highly cited. Here we have only the subset of the network that is very highly cited and these can be selected in the other visualizations as well. Now choosing another statistical measure, or in this case other metadata, such as the year of publication, we can then see the evolution of this data set over time. Now using the filter we see starting back in 1969, advancing forward, we see a group show up there on the left in 1990s, and then a group on the right, some bridge papers that cite both groups, and then finally we see an explosion of activity in the right group in two, the two, mid-2000s, especially 2006, that's 7 and 8, and the group on the left isn't cited anymore. Now some of the insights we want we can just get from the force directed layout provided here, like these, uh, this evolution of this separate group that was disconnected to the first. But to get a more algorithmic perspective on how interesting those are, we use this find communities feature. And what that does is find groups of papers that cite each other more frequently than uh, they cite between the groups. And in this case we see that subgraph we uh, noticed before, float off to the left, that initial research group that's not cited by any of the more recent papers. We see a large central connected component that we can drag out and see a little bit. And then we have this very tightly connected, but still distinct cluster out on the right that corresponds with a shared track at a 2007 conference. Now, if we want to investigate those papers further, we can click on them and bring up the citation context of them. Now, this is the text of all the citations to that paper from every other paper that cites it. And the citation context is actually quite valuable. What it shows is uh, a summary of the paper, its critical reception over time, any follow-up articles for it, and this is very rich in uh, information that's quite good for surveys. When you click on any one of those citation contexts, it highlights in the original full text where that occurred. So especially if it's a terse citation or you can't understand it without uh, its surrounding context, you can see it right there in the paper. And then you can even read the full text of the paper in this form, although it's not formatted very well. Uh, and there, all the citations we know about are hyperlinked, so you can click them and highlight them in the Reference Manager and other visualizations, so you can find references very quickly. Clicking on an entire community of papers gives you a concatenated insight text for it, which can be quite long and very difficult to read, which is where multi-document summarization comes in. Here we provide a summary of all of the documents in that community based on their citation context, and it's much shorter, and here it tries to show only the unique, most relevant pieces of information from the citation context of all of those papers. 
and give you an overview of that community. These citation context summaries have been proven uh, to be just as valuable as abstract summaries or full text summaries. Uh, in fact, each of those three summary types uh, contains disjoint information uh, that is not available usually in the other two. Standard chart types like scatter plots can be very useful for data cleaning tasks as well as for finding trends within your data. So here, by plotting the number of citations papers received within this data set versus the number that they received from the entire database, we can find uh, interesting trends of those papers that were highly cited overall, but not uh, within this data set as much. Here, those two uh, green ones on the top left stand out from a fairly linear trend. You know, those are papers that are more relevant to the general crowd about dependency parsing instead of just this focused subset. We could also change uh, one of these axes to by year, so we can see the number of citations these paper received over time and see a couple of outliers, like one from 1969 and several from recent years that were very highly cited and a general upward trend.